Hello everybody, my name is Tom Lenz. I'm a professor at the University of Mons in Belgium in the Computer Science Department in the Software Engineering Laboratory. The focus of this presentation will be on the relation between package dependency management and the reliance on packages that uh, still have releases with a zero major version component. This research is conducted as part of a project called uh, Seiko Assist, which is a Belgian inter-university project. I will refer to the problem of depending on packages in version major version 0 as the zero space problem. So this research has been conducted together with uh, another uh, research associate who is called Alexandre de Caen. This presentation has also been published or will be published soon in a journal article the link to the full details of this publication can be found uh, below in this download on, that's available on Archive. So I will report on the results of some empirical analysis that we conducted on four different package management systems. Cargo for Rust packages, RubyGems for Ruby packages, Packagist for PHP packages and NPM for the Node JavaScript ecosystem. In total, uh, there is lots of packages available in these ecosystems. You can see the number of packages but that range between 35,000 in the smallest ecosystem and up to over 1 million different packages in the largest one, which is uh, NPM. So we have package ecosystems of different orders of magnitude. In terms of number, uh, each of these packages have uh, tend to have multiple releases, so the number of releases is uh, sometimes even a tenfold of the number of packages, ranging from 183,000 to uh, almost 9 million in NPM, and even more dependencies, going up to 48 million dependencies in NPM. All of this data we have downloaded from the open source repository and dependency metadata in the libraries.io dataset um, which uh, if you are interested in it's a very useful source of uh, data that you can access through this uh, Zenodo digital object identifier. So if you study the different packages in these four different package managers then obviously you will find packages with many different uh, releases and each of these different releases they will have a particular version numbers. All of these packages they claim that they follow the semantic versioning policy so basically they will have a, tr a three component versioning uh, system composed of a major version, a minor version and a patch version. Typically the packages will have a version number that is uh, above 1.0.0 so you will have versions like 1.0, 4.0.6, 7.1.3, .1 and so on. Uh, this is what we call, will call the OnePlus space. We'll also find lots of packages that are still in what we call the zero space, which is versions where the major component is zero. For example, 0 0.0.1, 0 0.1.0, 0 0.12.3, and so on. So and what we wanted to study was to which extent are packages in these four different package managers making use of releases in the OnePlus space or of releases in the Zero space and how this affects the dependency management in these different package managers. Uh, why did we want to do this? Basically because it is generally considered that if you have packages that have a major com version component 1 that they are considered to be uh, stable packages, also more mature packages and hence they are more likely to be popular. On the other hand, if we look at packages whose releases are still in the zero space, then they are often uh, considered as being unstable and still uh, under development. So they are not yet uh, mature. But is this really the case? Is this common wisdom really the case? Well, uh, let us just uh, have a look at two uh, examples. Take for example one package in NPM which is uh, zero kit web SDK. Uh, which is uh, currently in version 4.6.0.6 so it's already a pretty high uh, first version number so one could consider this package to be already mature and stable. Is this really the case? I would say not really because in total 
there has been only five releases of this package over time in total only 16 commits and there has been one contributor active for this particular package in fact it even turns out that this package has no longer been maintained since July 12, 2017 and uh, because of this it has been archived on GitHub in June 2018 even though it's still uh, available on NPM if we take another example in the zero space there we have for example Axios which is a package that is still in a zero release, 0 0.21.1 to be precise. So one could consider that because it's still in a zero version, it's not production ready yet. Uh, but on the other hand, if we look at this package, if we look at this package history, it has had over time 46 different releases, a total of almost a thousand commits and 257 different contributors. Moreover, uh, if you look at the details on GitHub, we found that it has uh, on, uh, on average 10 million weekly downloads, about 50,000 different packages, uh, other NPM packages that depend on it. And moreover, on GitHub we also can see that it is used by roughly 3.5 million other GitHub repositories. So one cannot really say that this package is not production ready. So one could uh, argue that uh, the fact that there are packages in the zero space that are already production ready and they tend to follow the zero based versioning uh, scheme which is actually some a term that has been coined by a person that developed this uh, satiric website uh, zeroverd.org where he's making mocking of people that stick to uh, only major version zero for their releases uh, and use this as a statement to say that if you have a major that your software's major version should never exceed the first and most important number in computing, namely zero. Uh, in fact, it's a satirical uh, website, but nevertheless, there is lots of popular packages that are actually following, between parentheses, this zero-based versioning strategy. Uh, in fact, if you again look on that website, you will look find lots of packages like React Native that have been developed over many different years. For example, uh, React Native, it's a very popular project, uh, it has had 345 different releases, it has been existing over 5.5 years, and it's still currently under a major version 0 today. Uh, the same for the project I just mentioned before, Axios, uh, which is still under its uh, version 0, uh, even though it has been developed over 6 years and it has a lot of stars and lots of uh, dependence and so on. We can go over this list uh, for quite a long time and find lots of extremely popular packages that are still in their major version zero. So this led us to consider the following research question. Is it true that, that many packages tend to get stuck in zero space? To find this out, we did some analysis to compute the proportion of packages in each of the four studied ecosystems that still have a release in a particular version range, so either only the version range belonging to the zero space, the version range belonging only to the one plus space, or a version range uh, belonging to both. So if a package has releases in both 0.y.z and uh, other releases that have a version superior to one, then we would consider that they are in the both. If we do this for the four different ecosystems, then we actually find that there is only a very uh, small minority of packages in all the ecosystems that have actually crossed the 1.0.0 barrier, so in the beginning of their lifetime. They were uh, a package with major version 0, and then they migrated to a version that was superior to 1. For many packages uh, in these different ecosystems, we found that they actually got stuck in the zero space and never migrated to version 1. The proportion of such packages really depends on the considered ecosystem. In fact, we can find that there is two types of package managers, those like packages and NPM, in which uh, there is only a minority of packages that are stuck in zero version space. And then we have, on the other hand, RubyGems and Cargo, where a large majority of packages are always and will continue to remain in zero space. This is about 75%, so three out of four 
packages always have a head a zero release and for cargo it's even worse because it's up to 92 percent so for this it seems to be the case that they are actually not following a semantic versioning but zero based versioning because they never cross the 1.0 version barrier so now let us focus again on those packages that are actually in the both category so packages that have actually migrated from a zero version to a one version then uh, we did some survival analysis to find out how long did it take for these packages to migrate to uh, the OnePlus space. So if we compare the time between their first zero release and their first uh, release superior to one, then uh, this survival analysis shows the proportion of packages uh, having done this. And actually what we found that in the major, for the majority of packages, it only took a few months to cross the mythical 1.0 barrier, but still, for one out of five packages, it took over more than a year. And uh, uh, in the, for the worst uh, ecosystem, namely in Ruby Gems, in many cases, it took over two years uh, before, if they migrated actually to, uh, to the OnePlus space, it took over uh, two years to do this. So now this is about uh, the prevalence of zero releases in these four different package distributions, package managers. Uh, now let's have a look at the effect of this on the dependency management in these four different package distributions. So of course we know that in these four different package managers you have lots of dependencies between different packages you can have packages you can have dependencies between between packages that are all belonging to the one plus space you can also have lots of dependencies between packages between the zero space but more importantly there is of course also dependencies that go from packages that are considered stable and that are in the one plus space to packages that are still in the zero space and vice versa so we wanted to find out uh, to which extent this is the case and to which extent is this a problem. More in particular, let us focus on the red arrows, which are dependencies from packages that have a release that is above 1.0 and that depend on other packages that still have a release uh, with major version 0. So we asked ourselves the question, is it actually a problem for a mature popular package to depend on a package that still have a 0.y.z version. Why did we ask ourselves this question? Because we found several uh, citations of popular blogs uh, for different ecosystems that this is considered to be a problem. For example, uh, Jeremy Kahn uh, in his blog for NPM said that you cannot trust a project that depends on another project that is still in a 0.y.z version because such projects are not meant to be ready for use. Uh, for Cargo Rust uh, there was a similar uh, reference uh, that you can find on this blog uh, here where they consider depending on a package that is still in version 0.y.z as a bad thing and that should be avoided. So of course this is just two different blogs where some people say that it's a problem. Uh, is this generally the case? Difficult to say. So to get some more insight in this, we try to find more qualitative evidence of this by doing a survey on LinkedIn and on Twitter with uh, in total 102 respondents where we ask them the following question. As a developer, suppose that you need to depend on an open source package distributed through one of these package managers, would you actually trust depending on a package that has major version zero? There were four possible answers. Uh, the obvious answer are sure, I don't mind depending on this, or no, I would never uh, depend on such a version. And then some intermediate responses which, which say, I would only do this after checking the package or the package history uh, for this particular package I would like to depend on or I would only do this if there is no real alternative. What we find uh, in the responses is that the answer about is it can it be can one trust to depend on 0yz versions is really mitigated because 
uh, more than half of all responses are in these categories where they say I would only do it after checking or if there is not really an alternative. So actually the one where they say no there is no problem at all of depending on such a package it's only one out of three so two-thirds of all the respondents said it's it might be problematic to depend on such a package sure so you shouldn't do it without uh, any checking or without looking for alternatives of course all of this is related to the use of uh, semantic versioning i don't think i have to explain semantic versioning to most of you but what is important to uh, recall if you look at the details of the semantic versioning uh, policy is that in this uh, policy they actually say something explicitly about using a major version zero a major version zero is actually intended for initial development only why because if you have a major version zero then basically anything may change at any time even if you do a patch update you might still introduce breaking changes just for a quick reminder for those uh, people in the audience that don't know what semantic versioning is if we take this uh, traditional three component uh, version numbering then if you would like to depend on uh, some package that has a particular version number and you want to be semantic versioning compatible if you uh, use you can use dependency constraints to depend on other packages if you use a tilde constraint then you signal that the versions of the package you depend on uh, you allow any increase of their patch number and you assume uh, that it will not introduce any breaking changes if you use a caret constraint to depend on another package version then you say that you also allow minor updates of the package you depend upon and semantic versioning implies that also minor updates are still supposed to be backward compatibility so they will not introduce breaking changes if on the, on the other hand you use a very permissive constraint where you also allow automatic upgrades of your major of the major version component of your dependencies in that case it might be that uh, you will have to face uh, backwards incompatibility problems because a change in the major release number might introduce breaking changes. The problem with this is that uh, not all of the four studied package managers stick adhere to semantic versioning in the same way. Uh, and also they also don't use the dependency constraints in the same way. So here on the left we have listed the different common types of dependency constraints that are being used and the four different package distributions being considered. Since we wanted to do an analysis about the relation between using dependency constraints and uh, how this affects reliance on uh, zero major versions, we first needed to translate the dependency constraint notation into a uniform interval based notation in order to have the exact meaning of the notation that might differ between the different ecosystems. For example, uh, if you take uh, cargo and you would specify 1.0, then it was, this would actually mean that you accept any version number between 1.0.0 and the next major release. Well, if you would do this for NPM, then this would actually mean only all versions between 1.0.0 and 1.1.0 excluded and even for uh, packages uh, it is actually would mean just one single version that's allowed so we can see that there is differences uh, across different package distribution about how a particular version number is interpreted the most important version constraints being used however they are used in a more or less systematic way across different package managers for example tilde 1.3 is interpreted in the same way for all package managers and the same is true for caret constraint uh, except that it's not available for rubygems so if you now uh, relate this to semantic versioning then basically everything that's showing showing in red are constraints that are more restrictive than semantic versioning because semantic versioning that says that everything except major uh, upgrades are expected to be 
backwards compatible. So for example, using Kyret 1.3 is semantic versioning compliant, but using tilde 1.3 is more restrictive than semware. And then you have the more permissive constraints, which are things like, for example, anything that's bigger than 1.2.3 or using a store constraint will be more permissive than semware. Now the interesting part here is that if you look at constraints, dependency constraints to a version number with a major version zero component, then they are always considered as being more permissive than semware. Why is this the case? Basically because semware dictates that if you have a zero version, any upgrade, even a patch upgrade of your zero version will be considered to be potentially introducing a breaking change. Uh, the different ecosystems we studied tend to be more permissive since they do allow for patch updates and they assume that patch updates are still considered to be non-breaking. Uh, here uh, we looked at the different documentation in the four different packaging ecosystems to find evidence of this and they actually uh, do say uh, this and they do show the deviation against semantic versioning but uh, not in an extremely explicit way. For example, if you have a version 0 then you can consider the, actually the minor upgrade as a breaking change up, uh, indicator which implicitly assumes that patch updates are non-breaking. Here again the same for, uh, for NPM. For Cargo, it's the same. If you make breaking changes, you can increment the minor versions. So this implicitly assumes that if you upgrade patches, they are not breaking. And uh, here again, uh, this is for uh, packages where uh, if you have a version, a version that's in the zero space, then uh, the caret constraint is considered as a version that is allowing patch upgrades as well, and so on. So it appears that the four different packaging ecosystems are more permissive than Semver uh, specifies. And when we analyze this, we indeed see that this is the case in all of the four different studied ecosystems. The percentage of packages that have a dependency to some other package that's still in version 0, they uh, have no problem with accepting patch updates. You can see here in green the proportion of uh, dependencies that allow for patch updates, which is uh, a big uh, majority. And in the case of RubyGems, they even allow for minor updates, even if this would clearly be considered as breaking changes in all of the other ecosystems. So for sure, uh, with respect to dependency management and dependency constraints, the packaging ecosystems are more permissive than what Semver uh, specifies. Now the next question is, if you remember one of the pictures I have shown before, uh, is that uh, we found a difference between two of the ecosystems that have lots of packages that are still in zero version space, while in the other two ecosystems there was many, much less packages that are still in zero version space. Why uh, is this the case? Uh, we looked at the default initial version that was set for newly created packages in each of the package managers. If you take uh, the cargo package manager and if you do a cargo in it, then it will create an initial version with as default uh, value 0.1.0. So it's clearly in the zero version space. Uh, in NPM, it's different. In fact, it's different since April 2014, where if you would use npm in it, it would set the default uh, package version of a newly created package to 1.0.0. Exactly because the ecosystem managers do not agree with the fact that the Semver specification does not adhere to or is uh, different for 0.x.y versions, which only leads to uh, confusion. For packages, there is no specific initial version that's set. Basically, the version number used for a newly created package is deduced from the git tag that can be found in the git repository where the package is being developed. 
And for Ruby gems, it's like cargo. The initial version will be set as 0.1.0. .0. So um, cargo and Ruby gems, they set as a default uh, zero version as initial version, while npm sets uh, one version, and while for packages is basically the developer that decides. So because of this, we do find a big difference across the four different package distributions in what is the initial version being set for different packages. Uh, so for packages and npm, we see that uh, a majority starts in version 1.0.0. Uh, in the npm, it's maybe yeah, it's still it's a majority, but I guess it will increase over time, since the new policy adopted by npm started in 2014. Uh, while for cargo and Ruby gems, the proportion of packages newly created that are starting in 1.0 is really minor, simply because the default policy is to set a 0.1.0. .0 version. So this explains why uh, basically these two different ecosystems are major majoritarily in um, zero space because of the default because of the default 0.1.0 .0 version that is being set upon creation of a new package. Uh, this is actually showing the same thing but in an evolution over time uh, so there is nothing uh, special uh, to say about this, except for the fact that, for example, in NPM, we see that since 2014, where NPM changed its policy of uh, specifying uh, the creation of a new package to 1.0.0, the proportion of releases being in zero space is actually uh, decreasing. So we see that the effect of a policy can make a big impact. What we also notice, if you look at the percentage or the proportion of releases that are still in uh, zero space, that it's really abundant and there is lots of releases that are still in zero space, ranging from 2 out of 10 for packages, the green one, up to 9 out of 10 for cargo, the blue one. So 0.y.z releases are really prevalent everywhere. What can we deduce from all of this or recommend from all of this? Basically, if uh, it is the goal of package managers like Cargo and RubyGems to stick better to the semantic versioning policy or to uh, inside their package maintainers to mod move out of the zero version space sooner, then they should probably change their release policies and more in particular the way of specifying the initial version number of a newly created package. Now let's focus on dependencies. We have lots of packages that are in zero version space and uh, we want to know how much, to which extent, other packages depend on such packages. So what we see here is uh, the distribution of the number of dependent packages that depend either on a package that's still in version zero or a package that is in one space. And we see this for the different ecosystems. If you look at these different distributions, uh, it's difficult to see a difference. In fact, we don't really see a difference between depending on a zero version package or a one uh, package. There is lots of packages that depend on packages in one space, but there is also lots of packages depending on packages that are still in the zero space. And in fact, from a practical point of view, we try to find out, do we find a difference between those packages that depend on packages with major version 0 and those packages that depend on packages that are in major version 1 and we couldn't really find a big difference. They had a comparable release frequency, they had a comparable number of dependencies, a comparable number of stores, number of forks and so on. So in practice there is the developers that use depend on packages don't seem to make a big distinction between depending on a 1 plus package or depending on a 0 version package. So if we consider zero packages to be problematic, then in that case the maintainer of those packages should be invited uh, to cross the, the 1.0 barrier as soon as possible in order for packages that are already in the one space to safely depend on them without uh, having the problem of having any 
breaking changes or not being able to respect the semantic versioning policy. From all of this, what can we conclude? Well, there is uh, many different things that we can conclude from this presentation and the findings of our analysis. First of all, if you look at semantic versioning, then the rules are a bit confusing because semantic versioning makes an explicit distinction between its rules for OnePlus packages and for packages that are still in the zero space. And moreover, the distinct package managers that we studied, they all have a different way of following uh, the semantic versioning. They are not fully semantic versioning compliant, especially when it concerns packages that are still in the zero version space. What we also found that, uh, well, although people believe or think that packages that are still using a zero version number are not yet mature or production ready, in practice that doesn't seem to be the case. There is lots of packages in the zero version space that are popular, that are mature, and in terms of dependencies to packages uh, in the zero space or one space, we couldn't observe any practical difference between how they are used. Still, there appears to be a big artificial psychological barrier that makes it so that lots of packages never or only very slowly traverse the mythical 1.0 barrier. So what can we do to improve upon this? First of all, we believe that there is a need to increase the awareness of the specific versioning rules and dependency constraints being used by particular package manager. We also believe that there should be more uniformity in these rules across package managers. Uh, we also believe that uh, there should be a better alignment between the semantic versioning rules and the rules being used by different package managers. And if there is a difference, this difference should be made more explicit and should be documented more clearly to the package manager community. And finally, the last recommendation is that if uh, package maintainers consider their package to be production ready, they should be incited to move out of the zero space as soon as possible. Okay, so this is the conclusion of my presentation. I hope you have any questions and I would uh, be delighted to respond to them. Thank you for your attention.